one of the NDC's representatives in the Electoral Commission National Coalition Centre or Strong Room, Dr. Michael Kwesa White, says they left the room on the instructions of the chairperson of the EC, Jin Mensa, to consult with the flag bearer of the party in the last election, John Mahama. According to him, he and his other colleague, Rojo Metonunu, had difficulties accepting some of the results from the region and had insisted on verifying those results before signing the Form 13 to enable the EC go ahead and declare the outcome of the elections. Given evidence from the witness box on the election petition, Dr. White said the EC on their blind side declared the results without their input. You were not present at the commission because you left when you realized that the petitioner had lost the election. My lords, that cannot be true because as at the time we were instructed to go and have deliberations with the petitioner in that room, we had come nowhere close to knowing who had won and who had lost because the totals as they were coming from the regions had not been put together and of course there were issues with some of them. So we couldn't have even put the totals together and decided that candidate A or B had won the election. So there, there is no reason why anybody should believe that we had left because we noticed that A or B was losing the election. Besides, we did not go into that room with a fixated mindset that by all means our candidate must win. We went to the room to make sure that whatever the summary sheets that were coming from the regions were reflects the true will of the people who went out to cast their votes on the 12th of December 2020. You see the fixation that you have is what you have just displayed in this court. Now let us go to your exhibit that you have attached to your witness statement. Mr. Isidun Ketia asked me to ask you about how that letter came about. My Lord, as we began noticing challenges with the summary sheets that were coming in, we considered it proper to relay the information to one, the petitioner, and two, the political party on which he stood as the presidential candidate. And as we relate to them, we also told them that we had sought audience with the first respondent. I should say that we sought audience twice with the first respondent. In the first instance, when my colleague went, she told him that I have heard you, you seem to have some genuine concerns, give me a few more minutes and I will get back to you. The second instance was when she instructed that we should go and have deliberations with the petitioner and return. But up to that point, you didn't deem it fit to register your complaint in the mode set out under CI 127. My Lord, as I had indicated earlier, answer the question, please. Because there was no space on the form for us to indicate the reasons. Oh, okay. Now, did you mean this letter to be an official letter? My Lord, the question again. Did you mean this letter to be an official letter? At the exhibit, the exhibit attached to your witness statement, did you mean it to be an official process? To the best of my knowledge, yes. Now, as a lecturer, you believe, I believe that when you deliver an official process, you ought to be receipted for. Is that correct? That is correct, my Lord. Now, look at your document and tell us where it is indicated that it was received at the headquarters or any other branch of the first respondent. Indicate for me. My Lord, there is no indication of it on the letter, but 
it is important to be cognizant of the circumstances of the time between the seventh and the ninth, if not earlier. So highlights for you of what happened there. He described as de deliberate deceit the decision by the first respondents, the EC, to go ahead with the declaration of the presidential results. Dr. White also took questions from the panel. Dr. White. Yes, my lord. Can we look at uh, an exhibit, uh, the presidential election regional results summary sheet? My, my lord, please, I, I couldn't hear you. Presidential result election regional results summary sheet is attached to your witness statement. Attached to my witness statement? Yes, your witness statement. Okay. Eastern region. Eastern region, yes, my lord. The one with the... Mr. White, Dr. White, look at the one... This yes, one. yes, my lord. Now look at the far right column. The far... Right column, the back, bottom, the bottom part. Okay. Reasons if refuse to sign. You say it. Yes, my lord. So are you seriously saying that if you had any reason to refuse to sign, you couldn't have registered it there? That column. I want you to be very are you seriously saying that this column could not take any reason for your for a refusal to sign? My lord, with the greatest of respect, this form is designed purposely for regional representatives at the coalition center at the regional level. Yeah. They are the ones who are required to sign and a space made available for them and state reasons. Yes. At the national coalition center, my lord, no space whatsoever is provided on any form whatsoever to indicate why we have, not, we have a concern and we needed it registered. And in fact, it is in consideration of that that we decided that let's have a conversation with the returning officer and raise our concerns. So you agree, so you agree with me that at the regional level, there is a space for parties representative to assign reasons for not signing. Yes, my lord, uh, but not at the national level where I was a representative. Uh, one, one minute. Uh, yes. yes, my lord. You said you received training or before assuming your duties. Yes, my lord. So you've seen the form 13 before? Form 13? Yes. I have seen the form 13 during the training process, yes. All right, I'm going to show you a copy of the form 13 that has been brought to this court. Okay. It's not in evidence yet, but I'm going to show it to you. Please show it to his lawyer and then show it to him. Court correspondent Joseph Akable, who was in court today, is joining me on the line right now so we can have a conversation on the back of this. He's actually joining me on Zoom. Uh, Joseph, it's good to see you. Now, what's been the response from uh, lawyers for both sides? We know that they usually um, you mount the stage and answer some of your questions. Wrap it up for us on both sides. It's always been sort of a win win for them, as they say. Yes, and as far as they are concerned, they always make the point that it's been a good day. So first, uh, Dr. Dominic Aine spoke on behalf of the petitioner's legal team, and he insists that they had a good day. They are witness testimony that indicates that uh, there was an attempt to deceive them in leaving the EC strong room in order to allow for a competition that was ever ready to be carried through and a, a, a resource that were declared that indicates that there was a predetermined outcome even before the process started. They said that evidence was not rebutted and that Dr. Mike Passawite have put across a solid uh, responses to the questions that were posed in support of the case of the petitioner. Hmm. Well, usually what the, the, the uh, cross-examination uh, does for whoever is doing that questioning is to run down the, the, the credibility of the of of the of the witness and as we hear we heard uh kojopo nkuma saying most of the rhetorical questions that he raised 
most of these will have to be answered by by the judges but we saw today that the judges uh, themselves you know had a lot of questions for mr fessa white yes uh, in fact the judges including justices Pell, uh, Marfusa, professor akote all had uh, questions to ask the questions mainly related to uh, the claim about uh, this instruction and that was when justice professor kote even made a point that in the witnesses statements to the court he uses the word uh, that they were asked and so he was asking that in terms of testifying and answering the question that he was asked he was using the word instructed and so he said the two words are different and so which one actually happened and dr pasawai says he was using them interchangeably and that anytime he uses asked he's referring to instructed in that they were instructed and so that was the a question that came from uh, Professor Kote, a, a member of the panel. Uh, just to see our post questions this time around also centered on the same issue. And it was during his interaction uh, with uh, Dr. Pesa White that the suggestion of harassment uh, was put forward uh, by Mr. Chikata. And the point that he made uh, was to the effect that uh, the, the judge was forcing an opinion, his own opinion, onto the witness in a manner that was not fair especially related to the point that just Siapa had made that uh, if they abandoned the work that they had gone over to the EC strong room to carry out in order to go and confer with their presidential candidate because they have been instructed to do, then they did not help the course of the petitioner in abandoning the work at that critical point in time. Uh, but Dr. Pesa White uh, disagreed with that and Mr. Chikata came in to make the point that another witness was being harassed. It's an excellent day for us in court because the issues are beginning to unfold one after the other before the eyes of all Ghanaians. Remember, this is a petitioner who came to court praying or invoking the powers of the Supreme Court that the results of the 2020 presidential election, when properly collated, come to a point where nobody got 50%. And therefore, they are asking for a rerun. And you would expect that they put witnesses in the box to advance this argument or to provide evidence that buttresses this. Today, as you've seen before your very eyes, their witnesses are here making claims of bad faith, which claims are questionable, now raising questions of the venue of the declaration, now suggesting that in one breath they say they never saw the Form 13, in another breath, what is being tendered before the court, they say is not a Form 13. Now, today, three key matters have been settled, in our opinion. The first is this fallacy that was being initially expressed and amplified uh, through Dr. Michael Pesa White, that the chairperson of the Electoral Commission instructed the representatives of the petitioner to leave the strong room. And on their blind side, some numbers were put together and announced. We are beginning to see clearly that that, that fallacy, at best, uh, is something that cannot stand cross-examination. You would notice that it's not just an interchange of words, instruction and asked. And I want you to take particular notice. When you read the petition, the petition no, sorry, when you read the witness statement, the witness statement says we were asked. Check the definition of asked. Now, in the witness box and under oath, he seeks to amend that and escalate the claim by saying they were instructed. And that's why you find the Venerable Akuto Ampao did not take too much time in his uh, cross-examination. He asked one key question. He says, I put it to you that you know that you cannot be instructed by the chair of the first respondent. And you heard under oath, they could no longer tell that on truth. He said, yes, we cannot be instructed by the chair of the first respondent. And we are clear in our mind that that fallacy has been settled and the court will take notice of it. That it cannot be true that the chair of the electoral commission would instruct and that the representatives of a candidate will obey that instruction. Indeed, questions as put by the council that you selected an option, you elected, and that you were derelict in your duty. That is what happened. And we are very happy 
that that is being settled. Another matter that is being settled is the attempt of the petitioner and his witnesses to surreptitiously question the results by discrediting their own agents. You notice that initially from the beginning of the case, they sought to make an argument that numbers had been cooked up and that the EC's computations were incorrect. Yesterday you saw the very skillful general with a calculator now arriving at 4751, 4751, 4751. Today they tried another tactic by trying to suggest that there was something wrong with the results that their agents had certified from the polling stations through the constituencies to the regions. And in cross-examination, you saw it clearly come out and it being settled that they could not use the back door to discredit their very own agents who certified the results from the bottom up and then claim that somebody from National had said that the figures did not add up. Another matter that we believe the court will take notice of is the attempt by counsel, and we believe successfully, to settle the dereliction of duty of the persons who were nominated by the petitioner to go into the strong room and assist in the collation of results. Now, please check. The NDC and candidate Mahama accredited four people. Four. In the end, two. And this is after they had done their parallel collation. In their uh, collation center with the TV screens, one of which you saw Mr. Mahama pointing that they were, they were winning or that they had won, and then their press conferences. After certifying or accrediting four, two went into the strong room. So that's Kojo Pongkuma there who speaks for the uh, second respondent uh, legal team. Let's hear from the, uh, uh, the petitioners today. The petitioner had an extremely wonderful day today because the narrative that we brought to court that there was a predetermined agenda on the part of the chairperson of the Electoral Commission to by all means, whether by hook or by crook, declare Nana Adodanko Akufado, the president-elect of the Republic of Ghana, played out very wonderfully today. And I'm sure you were all witnesses to it. The evidence of Dr. Kwesa White made it abundantly clear that the chairperson of the Electoral Commission, on that very day, acted in bad faith. He made it abundantly clear that when they were asked or instructed to go and then consult with the petitioner, that is His Excellency John Dramani Mahama, on some of the observations that they had made of irregularities that were significant in terms of the credibility and integrity of the results, they left in good faith, in the expectation that after consultation they were going to come back and then continue with the process as stipulated by law. However, as you all witnessed, that was not to be. Immediately they left, a few minutes after they left the strong room, the chairperson of the Electoral Commission surreptitiously and hurriedly went ahead to declare the results in their absence. Now, she basically ran all the time-honored practices and conventions that were established by her predecessors. There is a precedent in, uh, that was established in 2012 where the new patriotic party agents raised a number of issues relating to the results that were coming in. The former chairperson of the commission, in the person of uh, Dr. Afarijan, called a meeting of all the parties and their agents and the key stakeholders. And they sat around the table, addressed those uh, you know, uh, concerns that were put before him, and then ultimately declared the results. And we were all witnesses to what happened thereafter. The current president, brought a petition together with his vice president and they led Jake Obiche Bilamte to the Supreme Court 
and it played out for eight months before the Ghanaian public. So what happened on that day when she decided that she was not going to wait for them out of respect and courtesy and in accordance with due process of law to consult with His Excellency John Draman Mahama before coming back for them to redress the issues that the concerns that had been raised shows the utmost bad faith that she exhibited. It also shows that she was determined, and I, this bears repeating, she was determined that by hook or by crook, His Excellency Nana Adodan Kwakufado would be declared the president elect of the Republic of Ghana. And that's Dr. Dominica Yene there. Now, Joseph, away from this earlier today, Mr. Mohammed's lawyers filed a formal request demanding that the EC produces some documents to allow for inspection. Tell us a bit more about that. And so there are six documents that they are talking about. The first is the originals of the constituency presidential election results coalition forms. That's from nine uh, for all constituencies in Ghana. So for all 275 constituencies. And the second is the originals of the constituency presidential election results summary sheets from 10 for all constituencies in Ghana. Number three is the originals of the regional presidential election results coalition forms from 11 for all regions in Ghana. Uh, number four is the originals of the regional presidential election results summary sheets uh, for all regions in Ghana. And number five, the original the declaration of the presidential results that's from 13. And finally, the records of the alleged updates to the purported declaration of presidential election results on 9 December 2020 of the results of four constituencies in the greater Accra region. Uh, you recall that in 2012-2013, this issue came up uh, where uh, the petitioners then, Naradan Kakufado and Dr. Tabaumi and Dikotan Kobeche Belamti had asked to inspect the pink sheets. These are the pink sheets. These are the primary documents that are relied upon by the AC to undertake the declaration. And they had made a request and Justice Adenira, as she then was uh, currently retired just of the Supreme Court, in delivering a decision on behalf of the court, and they turned down the request. And the explanation that they made then was that a need has not been established, and two, these are documents that are already in the custody of the petitioners because they have agents across the country. In terms of the arguments that are made in this particular request from Mr. Mohammed's side, they make the point that in the course of Mr. Sidi Keter being cross examined by the EC's lawyer, there was a reference to two summary sheets for Eastern region. One had a constituency, Ayinswan, included, and the other had it excluded. And so they make the argument that they need to see the originals in order to enable them to know which one was used, because as it stands now, they have seen two sheets for one area. And so they need to have access to this particular document in order to uh, see what the EC relied upon uh, to declare the results. And so those will be the issues, and we can expect that tomorrow the arguments will rely on that decision that the court made in 2012 and 2013 by saying that the request was not necessary because they had the documents already. Then the reference will be made to what has transpired in this particular proceedings to make a case for why the request is different this time around, and the court will also take a decision as to whether to grant it or not. The Chief Justice did indicate that should they be able to deal with it in time, it will mean that agreements are will manage the witness box. So what is going to happen tomorrow, uh, uh, which we've seen over the past uh, few days, is that at the beginning, the beginning of the proceedings, we'll see the time being used to handle this matter. Yes, and so it will mean that Mr. Chikata will first put in the request. Uh, he will have to argue, yeah. cite the relevant law, and explain why this request is important. And once he is done, uh, the EC's lawyer responds, and he has already indicated that they are opposed to this request. Then once he is done, Mr. Kotampa, who represents uh, President Akufada, the second respondent, will also uh, respond then. Afterwards, as we've seen in times past, the court may now take a break and come back to give its decision. And once that is done, if it is done on time, the expectation is that uh, the cross examination of Jen uh, will take place. All right. Well, tomorrow it is there. Is it 9.30, 10? Yes, it's 9.30. But it's also worth to note that Mr. Chikata had also indicated today that should the court grant that request, there could be the, pr the probability that you would want to call some additional witnesses to testify. And so uh, it's, it depends on how the decision goes uh, tomorrow. But the time tomorrow is 9.30. Yeah. 
Joseph, thank you very much. And Joseph Akable is a court correspondent um, there telling us what happened today, at least giving us the highlights and what is expected to happen tomorrow. You're watching The Pulse with me, Gifty Ando Apia. I'd like to take a break now. When we return, we'll talk.